Hey guys, in this video, we're going to do a front diff rebuild for the Arma Creighton EXB with the LSD front differential in it. And of course, LSD stands for limited slip diff. Now, this car came from the factory with LSD in the front, LSD in the center, but a wide open diff in the rear. And I really wasn't sure if I believed that, but I checked the manual and I'll show you this in a little bit, guys. I checked the manual and the manual shows no star washers in the back. I didn't know if I believed that, so I tore it apart, and sure enough, there were no limited slip plates in the rear of this vehicle. But in this differential right here, we went ahead and destroyed it on one of our outings, and it, the outdrive cups were demolished when they kept popping out the drive lines, and there's a video covering that, guys. Anyway, we're going to pull it apart, and we're going to show you the easy way to get it apart. We're going to show you, lay it out, and show you every part that's in it, and then we're going to show you the easy way to put it back together. We're going to return it to stock, which means we're going to use all of the parts that came out of it because the inside is undamaged. Not only that, but we're going to put the 10K oil in it. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is our second shot at this video. The first time we did it, you guys caught an error that we had in it. It was a substantial one. This time we did a much deeper dive and we went down and we discovered a couple of new things. Now, what it is is Arma makes a shim kit and this comes straight from Arma guys. It, they make a shim kit that allows you to remove the star plates and run them all as open diff or if you want to, you can put the plates in the rear, shim it properly and the kit shows you how to do this guys. Shim it properly and you can have LSD all the way around in your car. It's going to be really cool. In this video, we'll explain to you how the hydrostatic system works, what makes it actually function the way they think it will, and at the end, we'll give you our opinion of what this system is. Keep in mind, guys, this is round one for Arma. I can only see better things in the future. So let's get it on the bench and get started. All right, guys, let's pull this thing apart. All right, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is get the differential out of the housing here. You can see everything's working freely. The outdrives are junk. So we need to get this thing apart. There are four screws right here on the perimeter. They're right around the outside and we're gonna go ahead and back these out. Now, this is plastic, guys, so real slow with the screw gun. We want, don't wanna be in a big hurry here. Nice, okay. There we go. And now you see the slots on the side. So you wanna grab it right along that edge and pull and the housing cap comes right off. Just like that, real nice. Now you'll be able to go ahead and get the differential out. Get a good firm grip and pull on the out drives and it pops right out in your hand. It can be a little stubborn sometimes, guys. Don't let that freak you out. Go ahead and just get her out. Now we're gonna disassemble this, so we'll go ahead and take the drive cup off the front, back out the grub screw, and hold the pinion on the inside and just slide it off. Now, push through, and the pinion will slide right through the bearings. There you go. And then, just take a tool of some kind and pop the bearings out. There's the small one, that's the out drive side. And on the inside is the larger bearing. That's the pinion side, so we want to go ahead and get that out. Oh, there we 
there we go. That's what you're looking for, guys. So that's all that's involved with that. Now we've got four screws on the differential itself. So we'll go ahead and back these out. It's one. There we go. There's two. Nice and easy, guys. There we go, three, and four. These are a little long-winded, guys, and I prefer not to use a screw gun. It heats up the plastic, so I usually use a tool like that to get things apart. There's all the screws involved in those two operations, and now let's pop the top off of this thing. There we go. Get a good firm grip on it and wiggle it side to side, and there you go nice and easy. This will show you the star discs and it will show you the gearing there. We're going to take the small end apart first. So the gasket right here guys, make sure and leave that gasket in place if it's not damaged. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the drive pin out, set that aside. Now there's a little trick here guys. If you just retract the drive cup a little bit and then push up, it'll pop out both shims and the O-ring. There we go. It's a little hard to get a grip on. There we go. So there's the shims and the O-ring. This will allow the drive cup to come straight off and that will also give you access to the bearing on the outside. Just like that. And that's all there is to it. So this is basically the easy side guys. So here's the parts involved in that. an O-ring and two shims. Now we're going to take this apart and you're going to take a good look at the star discs to start with. There's one. So that's one. It looks like a star on the outside. That's why we call it that. Then there's the center disc, which is a round disc, and then another star disc. And that is your LSD system for one side of the differential. Also, you've got the sun gear, which is also known as the outdrive gear and there will be two of those in there. So there's the first one. And that will give you access to the planetaries. So you want to go ahead and grab those by the rod. There's a top and a bottom. So grab the top one and just work it out. It should come pretty easy. There you go guys. That is the first set and it's got shims on the outside and we'll go over those later. Then the second one, grip that, slide it out nice and easy. There you go. Just like that. Now you've got all of the planetaries are out. Now we're going to go after the other sun gear. There you go. Guys, these forceps are the only way to go on that. I mean, you can get right down into tight areas. It makes this disassembly so much easier. Now if you look down the bottom, the drive pins down there and you can see the, the star gears. This is a dry diff at the moment so those slid right out no problem and you'll have all three. One, two, three. Just like that. Now there's no room in there so to, to get that pin out there's no room so we're going to have to go ahead and pull this grub screw and a lot of people don't know what that grub screw is for and this is it. It's not to check the oil or anything like that. The grub screw is just an access point so you can get that little drive pin out. Let's set that aside and that pin has to slide through that hole because there's no clearance down in the cup at least on this differential there isn't any. So work it through that hole right out there a little bit more and then you can pull it right out. Oh. There you go. It's just that easy guys. There is the drive pin. Now once you do that, we can do the same thing we did on the other side and we can go ahead and pull that drive cup down. There we go. Pull it down and then put it back. Come on now. There you go. <laughs> put it back in there and push all that stuff free. So you don't have to dig it out. It pops it up for you and makes it real easy. So there's the damaged drive cup. 
and there's the other components. Now, if it's an oil diff already, guys, you're going to have to dig these parts out, but it's just that simple to do. So you've got those two shims and an O-ring. So here's the components. Just like that. Now, for these planetaries, take a look at the little holes, the perforations in the shims. That's actually part of the LSD system. So you've got one shim right there, and you've got one gear. And take a look at the back of the gear if you get the chance. It's got little slots on it. That's part of the LSD system, and we'll go over that a little later. So there you go. That's all that's involved in the planetaries. So let's lay those out here. Nice. There's a completely built one. And then your star gears, or your, your star shims, your singular round shims, and your star shims, just like that. So here's your parts, guys. You've got your housing assembly right there. You've got your differential assembly right there, both sides with all the components that are in there. And then you've got your planetary setup and your LSD discs. And that's all that's in there, guys. So if you take a look at this, this is your planetary system. You've got a rod. Notice the flat spot in that. See it? The notch right in there. Okay, each one has one, and that helps to interlock things. Now, if you take a look at this, see the perforations in the holes? That is what controls the oil that it sort of adds resistance to it. So this is another part of the LSD system. Now this is what they look like interlocked because those two notches connect together and it allows it to make one piece. Now if you look at the star shims, <laughs> the star shims have slots in them and the round ones have holes. These discs have two sides to them. It has an aggressive side right there. It's the aggressive side. And when you flip it over, you'll see there's a smooth side. And that's what they talk about when they're showing you the shim set. So now, when you look at this, this layout right here is for the aggressive setup. So you got the small round one in the middle. This, the top row here, is for the mild setup. So it has less resistance. So along here, this is the aggressive setup with a round disc in the middle. And along the top row here, this is the mild setup. It has a lot less resistance, and so it's not quite so aggressive. So let's go ahead and put this back together, guys. We're going to go ahead and build this piece. So you need to get the gear on first. Remember, the bevel goes inward. There you go. And when you take a look at these, make sure that you look and put the smooth side toward the gear. Okay, it, it also has a rough side and a smooth side. So smooth side towards the gear, guys. Do the same thing on the flip side. There you go, just like that. And go ahead, look for the right side, and then stick it on there. Okay, that's ready to go back in the differential. Let's build the next one. Okay, same thing. Gears go inward, and take a look at your shim, and reassemble it, just like that. Same thing on the other end. So gears to the center, and your shim, make sure you look at direction, and then put that on there as well. Now you've got both your planetaries ready to go back in the car. Since these were undamaged, we didn't have to change any of the parts. However, here's the parts for the outdrive units for the EXB. So these can be a little difficult to get in, guys, so I had to wait a little while to get them. But you'll notice the shank on that is a lot bigger than a version 4, so they're not interchangeable. It's much bigger there. So these are the new units we're going to put on. Now you take a look at the housing here, and it's nice and clean, nice and dry. We went ahead and cleaned that up earlier. Very good. Okay. Now, first things we've got to do is we've got to get that bearing back in place, because this is the only chance you'll have to put it on there. Make sure it's free, no, no binding or anything, no grid in it. Put your iDrive unit through it. There you go, like so. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lube up this washer, or excuse me, we're going to go ahead and lube up this O-ring and we're going to put it in there. And there's a little bit of a trick to getting these in. I find that if you just run a tool through there and you just lean it on the part you're trying to put on and hold it there, you can slide it right down 
over where you're trying to put it. See there? And then just take your tool and work it down into the groove there. Be real careful not to damage this o-ring guys. It has to stay intact. There you go. Just like that. Now we're going to get the shims and put the big one in first guys. It has to go in that way. If you don't put the big one in first, the plates aren't going to fit properly. So big shim first, work it down. Nice. Just like that. Take the little one, put it over the top and work it down right on top of it. Nice. Okay. That being done, now we're going to go ahead and feed the drive pin right through that hole in the side of the casing. Right there. Fish it through. There you go. It can be a little stubborn here sometimes, guys. Just be patient. Find the hole in the drive shaft and fish it into that. And this is where these tools come in so handy, guys. You can do this so easily with these. Now, they can be a little tough to get through. Ooh, that went through nice. Okay. Just like that. Line it up. Okay, now we're going to put the star plates on. Now remember, the aggressive side down, guys. We want the smooth side towards the differential. Drop it in place. Notice how it fits over that inside, the smaller of the two shims. We'll put in the center one. That's the drag disc. And the last star plate. There we go. Just like that. Make sure they seat good. And then go ahead and line up the pin with the slots. There you go. Now here's why you did that guys. If you line this up properly here, that will allow you to get the tool down in the side. See how you got room to drop it down in there now? It allows you to place it in nice and easy. Like so. Hold a finger on it and just work it into those plates. You'll know when it goes in guys and then it's just right. Once that's done, go ahead and return your grub screw back to the hole. Because we don't want to forget to put that in, guys. It'll be a mess if you do. There you go. Now, don't torque it down too hard. It's just a plug, guys. Just a plug. Now, we're going to go ahead and throw just a little bit of base oil down in the bottom. Get everything down in there. We're not trying to fill it here, guys. Just enough to coat everything down there and get the oil worked in below that plate. There you go. Work it down in a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and put the planetaries in. Now on this one, make sure the notch is up and line those shims up so the textured section is upward. See that? That's the only way they're going to slide in, guys. Now they don't have to be out as far as spread apart. They'll fit down in there narrow. Once you get them down in, you can widen them afterwards. So just work them down in the hole like so and then push them to the sides and then work it down with your finger. So you're going to hold that down and just sink it a little bit. Turn it so that they settle in place, just like that. Okay, second one, make sure that notch is down this time because they have to interlock, guys. Just like that, nice. Get a hold of it there. Good, and remember, those shims have to be textured side up and down. The smooth sides are on the sides when you slide them in. Slip it down in there. See how they're smaller? They go right in and then you just push them to the side like that and they fit right in. Now, don't forget to sink it, guys. Twist it a little bit until they lock into place and you'll be able to tell because everything will move nice and smoothly. See there? Beautiful. Okay, now we can go ahead and top it up with oil. And be real careful with this, guys, because you only want the oil to the top of the gears. You don't want too much because it'll just overspill. You'll have pressure inside the housing. See there? It's just up on the gears. That's where you want that. Be real careful not to overfill. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put the outer drive gear on this side. Push it down in there. And then work it in a little bit, just like we do the other ones. Make sure that everything seats good. Now, let's build the opposite side here. So, like the other side, go ahead and put the, the bearing on first, get the out drive, slide it through. Beautiful. Now we're gonna take our lubed up O-ring and work it down over the top. With a tool, just gently work it down into the slot. Be careful on this, guys. Don't damage the O-ring. 
There we go. Now we're gonna add the shims. Now remember guys, big shim first. Okay, so that's gotta go on there to begin with. Work it over the top. Then add the smaller shim. There you go, just like that. Now push it down a little, make sure it sits flat. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the drive pin. Work it through there and beautiful. Just like that. Now line it up between the holes and there you go. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the plates in and get ready for assembly. So first we wanna put the star washer in and that star shim is of course smooth side in. So that means the rough side is up, okay? Seat each one in place, real nice, and then take your thumbs and make sure everything works down into its place. You'll feel it when it goes down in there, guys. Just like that, everything sits at zero. There's nothing sticking up. Everything is packed in the way it's supposed to be. Now, straight up with your pin slot, see that? The reason we do that is because on this, we're gonna line that up straight this way. So when you line the holes up and drop it on, it should fall directly into place with no effort. There you go. Just like that, guys. Now, make sure you sink it, turn it a little bit, make sure everything's moving smoothly, and center up your holes so that you can get your screws in. And then in a cross pattern, one, two, three, four, we're gonna go ahead and put the screws back in it. Okay, here we go. First one. We go and now we're not running these down tight we're leaving some room so notice how it's still sticking up here right there it's still sticking up because we don't want to bind anything so now we're going to jump to the opposite side and get that one started now that we got one on each side we're going to go ahead and bring them down a little closer but we're not torquing these guys we're just bringing them down close so it will kind of hold it in place while we put the other two screws in check it everything's working good now we're going to go ahead and add the other two screws. And like I say, if you're using a screw gun, guys, go super slow with your screw gun. You're screwing into plastic and those screws do heat up even though there's oil involved. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to torque these down in a cross pattern formation. So we're going to bring them down close to where they feel snug, but we're not actually torquing yet. Nice and snug. There we go. Work them down. to this one nice and now to this one bring them down so everything's flush there we go now in a round formation we're gonna torque these down because they're already seated just get a little torque on them to bring them down nice and snug now don't go crazy with this guys just tight will do you don't have to really crank down like I say you're screwing into plastic there we go, all put together. Now let's go ahead and build the housing. So first off, let's drop the big bearing in on the inside. And of course, I already inspected these and they're still in good shape. There we go. They push right in easy, guys. You should, if you're fighting it, you're binding somehow. Just line them up and they snap right in. See there? Now drop that pinion right down through the center, line it up, and it should drop right in. Easy peasy. There we go. Check it, make sure everything is smooth. This one didn't have any shims in there, guys, so we're just putting it back together the way it came apart. Okay, now see the flat spot? There's a flat spot in there as well, so line those up. There you go. That little pin right there, that's where the flat spot is. Roll it over and there's the grub screw. Now, hold the pinion with one hand, hold that cap with the other and keep them snug. Don't pinch it real tight, but don't let there be any play in there. Tighter down and then test. Everything's good. Real nice. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and put the differential in it. So line it up with the rails. This one doesn't have a shim on it either, so it'll go in pretty easily. Just pry it down gently and then make sure that it gets into the pinion good and you're not binding anything. Check for play side to side and then check the front, make sure you don't have any play there. If you do, shimming may be in order and that'll be a different video. There we go. 
and that's what it looks like in there once it's all in. Pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and lube this up, get it ready to go in the car. A little lithium grease does a wonderful job on that. There we go. Then just take and work it through with the pinion and it spreads it out real nice, just like that. Now let's go ahead and get the cap on it. Now the cap has a couple of rails on here. If you look right here, there you go. There's some rails there and there. And those actually line up to rails that are right there. So if you line these up right, guys, they go right together. Check this out. So we're going to go ahead and slip this in. Line up your rails at the top, just like this. Make sure you're up tight. Keep an eye on that little bottom point. There you go. Get it up nice and snug into the rails and watch. Just like that, guys. Took no effort to do that. It was pretty easy. And then we're going to screw this together in the cross pattern, just like we did the other bit. So top one, leave them loose. Don't tighten anything down until you have everything in there. So we'll skip over to the cross corner and we'll run that one in. Now we'll jump to the next one. And again, guys, if you're using a screw gun here, slow is the key. Because if you heat that plastic up, it's never going to hold. You're going to have problems. So slow is everything when you're screwing into plastic, okay? There we go. Now, take a look at that. We're going to go ahead and torque these in the same cross pattern, okay? So now we're going to torque them down. Nice and easy. Next one. There you go. And like I say, into plastic guys, don't get crazy with this. Just torque them down until they feel good and snug. Beautiful. Okay, there you have it. Back together, greased up and ready to go. Everything looks good, new out drives. Don't forget that cross pattern guys, that's how you wanna work those. It keeps you from getting gaps and things. There's your bad parts, and there you go. Okay guys, let's talk about the LSD system as a whole just for a minute. Now it consists of these three plates, there they are, and those plates are what create the hydrostatic field that tries to hold the oil in stasis. And what I mean by that is those three plates stack up, one, two, three. And if you want it aggressive, you got the big stars on the outside, those are the star disks, and the small round one in the middle. That's the most aggressive. Now, if you stack the two star disks and put the round one on the outside, that has a much lower scent, it's got a much lower friction rating with the oil, so it's going to allow you to spin up higher without getting the same resistance. So, Aggressive is with the small disc in the middle. Now, the way this works is you've got the two outer discs. Now, we're gonna set it up in the aggressive fashion just for this demonstration. The two outer discs, these are the star discs, guys. So these ones go in and they actually attach to the housing, not the differential. So those discs sit like so, and they've got slots in them. And if you take a look at them, the slots have a smooth side and they've got an aggressive side, and that's just the way it works when you punch stuff out of steel. So they set that up so the smooth side is in towards the differential, differential on all of them, which is kind of weird because it gives you one aggressive side towards the center disc. And that's a little weird, guys. I mean, the smooth, side, the smooth sides should be together towards the disc so you don't get that friction because they are a little rough and they could eat into that center one. But the way Arma tells you to do it is everything smooth towards the differential. Okay, we're gonna set it up that way because that's what they say. Okay, so you've got your two outer discs. These discs are gonna try and hold on to the oil. Those slots, they're gonna fill with oil and that's what creates that hydrostatic field. It holds on to it. It's like putting water in a sponge. You can take the sponge and move it back and forth really quick and the water goes with it because it's trapped in those pores. Same idea slightly different situation okay so the oil gets into those slots and those plates try and hold that oil still that's just what they do they try and hang on to it they're attached to the housing so they don't spin they spin with the housing so they're going to hold that oil in place now the one that fights it is the small round one okay that one's got not slots but holes in it now that one spins between these two now these two are trying to hold it still 
while that one's trying to drag it with it. Now, that only works under power, so check this out. If you take and you get some traction on one side of your car, and we're gonna say you're turning a left-hand corner, okay? The right tire digs, it gets traction, the car lifts a little, and the left side, left side starts to spin. What that means is inside the differential, on the right side that has traction, that's not spinning, okay? The power comes through the center of the differential and is ejected out the left side, okay? So now the left side is spinning like wild and you watch your tires grow and it's kind of cool looking, but the right side isn't spinning. So what that means is you're getting two to one power. This one's not spinning, this one is. The, the driveline's gonna send the power to it. You're gonna double the speed on this side. Now, this is where the hydrostatic field comes into play, guys. These two discs on this side are holding that oil steady, okay? They're just trying to keep it in place. That's how that works. The small disc on the inside, however, as that tire starts to balloon up and grow, is trying to rip that oil around in between those two plates and it becomes a fight. Now you get resistance. That's how this is supposed to work. So with that resistance in there, it locks it down a little bit and it transfers more power to the right side. So that's how that works. When you're going really slow and things aren't fighting each other inside the differential, it turns like an open diff, which when you're trying to be nimble on the track, that really does help. However, when you get into a corner and you start to balloon a tire, it's gonna give you a little more power on that side where you need it, and it's gonna get you around that corner a little better. And that's the idea of the hydrostatic field in the LSD diff. Also guys, if you take a look at the planetaries and that's these right here, you'll take a look at those and see that they've got the same thing in their shims. Now there's slots going around the outside of the shims for those. And these are really small guys. They're not gonna do a lot, but they'll do some. So if you look at the actual gear itself, notice it's got ridges that go around it, okay? The idea is that that has to fight as well because the outer shim is still gonna hold, try and hold the oil and the inside planetary gear is gonna try and fight that. So that adds a little more resistance too. Okay guys, so as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go ahead and show you the part number for the shim kit. So this is it. And this shim kit here is what you're gonna to need to go ahead and get those star discs out of there if you wanna run them as a typical open diff. And this will allow you to really stiffen up your oils and all that stuff. However, if you wanna run things in a normal fashion, well, Check these out, guys. Okay, so this is the actual manual for the EXB, and if you look, you notice that the discs are for the front and center diff only, and if you look at the, the shims down at the bottom, it says rear only, because you can actually run it as an open diff if you have the rear shims. Now this is the shim kit, and this one is for the front and the rear if you don't want the plates. So you add these new shims, and you can see where they're at, guys. They're right below the planetaries and right above them. And those are the ones that will allow you to remove those star plates and run it as an open diff. However, if you wanna run it the way it's designed, they did give you these two new shims down here, right below the star plates, and those will shim it properly so things work the way they're supposed to. They're different shims than come in the kit, but these ones are the upgrade. Also, if you look, the center diff is the same, however, the center diff has 100,000 weight oil in it, which is pretty impressive. And if you take a look, you can see the different ways to set it up. And here is where you can get your shims and what they cost. Hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and don't forget that notification bell to stay informed. You know. We here, we, we try to get these things put together so that we're as helpful as we can be. You know, more times than not, I go into a hobby store and I watch people bring in their cars in to have the hobby guys work on them. These things aren't all that hard to work on, guys, if you just know what you're trying to achieve. We're trying to put out videos here that you can follow along with and repair your cars. We even do upgrade ones, so if you want to upgrade your vehicle, we try to get those in too. We try to be detailed when we do this stuff so it's easy and simple and you understand why you're doing what you're doing and hopefully even helping a veteran or two along the way. You know, you guys, 
you already are on top of your game. We already know that. You guys catch us when we do something stupid and we get it repaired and get things online so that you can stay current. However, if you guys have add-ons for this, is, is if there's something that you think needs to be in the video that's not, please feel free to jam it in the comments and help others along the way. I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studio saying, keep wrenching, guys.